Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using the Kyle Microvision 5 for ARM. Now, I could have used any ARM device for this demonstration, any that's, that's supported by the Kyle Microvision 5, but the one I'm using is a Cortex M0 device. It's an XMC to go. Now, the starting point is Kyle Microvision 5, and inside here I've created a simple project. And let's take a look at this. And if we go to the options, we should be able to see that the device that I've selected is an XMC to go device. I've also configured it so that when we do the debug, it's going to use the onboard J-Link on my device. And in order to be able to control it from LDRay, I'm using an, uh, a script here that will be automatically generated. So let's check we can first of all build this project. So we'll do the, the build. OK, and now let's execute it on the target. So that's now flashing the target. And as we can see, that's now executing. And I can control the execution if I wanted. Well, let's close that down and let's close down Kyle Microvision 5. Now, this is the Eldre launcher and I'm going to open the compiler project that we just looked at. So this is the this project here. So let's open that and we'll edit the project and we'll find the name of the set. We can, we've got to analyze it as a system. We want to analyze this particular configuration. And there we have a list of the source files. So that's good. So now we should be able to go and open this in TB Vision. And once inside TB Vision, we can make any changes to the settings we want, such as selecting which coding standard we want to do. In this case, I've selected the uh, MISRA C 2012 standard. And now it's do, doing a, a deep analysis on that code. So it's generating now a number of reports and we should be able to take a look and see, well, what is this code like? Let's take a look at the code review. And we have a, well, this code wasn't written to be compliant to MISRA. And as we see, well, there are a lot of violations. If I double click on a particular violation, it opens the editor and I can see here that uh, I should have put a, a U here to indicate this is an unsigned value. All right, let's uh, now take a look at maybe something else. Let's take a look at the quality of the code. Let's take a look at a system call graph. And the call graph is going to show us all the functions and how they're interconnected. And they're color coded to show us things like function pointers, or in this particular case, a system call. Well, there's lots of different modes we can put this in. The one I'm interested in is taking a look at the metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. And the most interesting metric is the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function. That's this one, integer to ASCII. Well, let's view that graphically. And so here we're going to see a flow graph. And if I click on a particular block inside the code, we can see the corresponding code over here. If I was to click on this particular bit of code, we can see it corresponds to this block here. In the same way, I can click on the branches and I can see this is a branch from here up to there. Now, what I'd like to be able to do next is to execute this code. And as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we actually exercised? So let's go and perform the dynamic analysis. So first of all, this is going to instrument the code. It's then going to perform the build. So Afterwards, it's then going to execute on the target. And here it's open the Kyle Microvision 5 IDE. So I can now click on that. That's now executed. We've got the coverage from the target using that script that was auto generated. And let's now take a look and see what coverage did we obtain. So we're going back to a call graph. And this time, let's put that into a mode where we can view the coverage. So coverage is very good, except for the integer to ASCII. Well, let's see which parts of the code we haven't executed. And so highlighted in red, we have a number of branches here that haven't been executed, but also we have some blocks of code that have never been executed. Why haven't we executed this? Well, it looks like we've never had a value less than 180. So that's very easy to, to get coverage for this using the unit testing tool TB Run. So let's go and invoke TB Run. So that's now going to open TB Run. It'll do a little bit more analysis. 
And now I'm going to open a sequence that I've previously created. So I've got here a number of test cases. Let's open this one for the integer to ASCII. And we can see we have seven test cases, all with different inputs and expected outputs. So there we have the inputs and expected outputs. We have a description for each test case. Well, let's go and execute this and see what happens. This time I'm executing on the target without the, the, the graphical user interface. So it's taking a little bit longer, but I don't have to press any, any buttons. And as we can see, the tests have passed and we should now be able to see that we have increased coverage. So if we go down to the integer to ASCII function and we can now see we have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage and 100% MCDC. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can work with the Kyle Microvision 5 for ARM. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.